I work with printmaking, drawing and performance and most recently painting. I'm based at studios called Paradise Works which is in Salford which is a studio of 37 different artists. I also have made a lot of performance and theatre work and I jointly direct a smaller arts organisation called IAP MCR. Keep thinking about my first experience of a library, which it was in Middlewich in Cheshire, which is where I grew up. As a space, it was phenomenally welcoming and really open. I think that's the big important thing. The first project I did with a library was with the John Rylands on Deansgate in Manchester. I'd been doing some work with Polari, which is a socialect predominantly used by gay men between the 1920s and the 1970s in England. And it was a way of disguising yourself when homosexuality was illegal, but also identifying yourself to other people. We put a bid into the Arts Council for some money and wanted to find a venue to, to do some work. So I went to the, the John Rylands Library and met the new outreach person there. The John Rylands is quite a difficult space to work in because you can't attach anything anywhere because of the the fragility of the of the space so it was trying to find an interesting way of mounting an exhibition using the existing infrastructure i have in my collection a program from the first night of oscar wilde's importance of being earnest which was february the 14th 1895 and so i approached jackie who was then the outreach worker and said this is what i want to do it's about polari and showed her this programme and she kind of flinched and went, oh, why isn't that in an archive? <laughs> it shouldn't be in your bag. Um, but that got us kind of having a conversation and because there's a relevance to that program and the language that Oscar Wilde used to Polari and to obviously kind of queer notions of disguise. So we then worked with the library over maybe six months and stage an exhibition and the the content of the exhibition was blackboards a lot of my work has involved text text as a visual art form they have these beautiful glass cases so I filled these cases with these blackboards with kind of indecipherable text and writing and scrawl and lots of words that people wouldn't necessarily understand and references to disguise and secrecy and hiddenness so we did this exhibition and um out of that came a theatre show because the library said we'd really like you to do a tour, be more proactive about engaging people and having conversations and having discussions. So we devised this tour of the exhibition, something which started in, in a library in a really specific and very beautiful space, expanded, which I think is one of the great beauties of doing that. Very much came from them going, what, what else can we do? It's great to have this you know, this work in the cases and in the in the other spaces, but let's let's do something more that engages people in a really kind of direct fashion. Very enthused and very positive about the idea of like, yep, we, do, we want people to come in and look at things, but we want them to really more directly engage with stuff. So that was great. As I said, I manage a, a company called IAP MCR, and we've been doing a project, project called Legacy of 67 for the last 18 months. And we've worked with Central Library quite a lot over the last few years and approached them as a partner. So the, the starting point for that project was oral histories. So we trained a mixed age group of people in oral history techniques and how to do that style of interviewing. We then paired them up with older people who had some lived experience of that time and those interviews are all archived at Archives Plus for anybody to access permanently. And there's also a page on the Archives Plus SoundCloud, which is devoted to the work that we've been doing, where anybody can access that remotely. And there's, there's smaller snippets of those interviews that anybody can listen to at any time. And that might then give people an inroad into working with the longer versions of the interviews. So that's the first part. And we're really interested in how you take that kind of first-hand historical material and turn it into contemporary art in whatever format. And how do you do that? How do you make that happen? What's the relevance? What can it give to people? We work with a writer called Joshua Val Martin who took a lot of the initial oral history interviews and we created a new theatre piece that premiered in 
March at the Edge in Chalton called Great Indecencies, which was a show for three performers, using those uh, interviews as a starting point. I also created a new body of visual artwork um, using the visual material in Archives Plus. So we had a, a display case of original material from the archives, and then I created these new works, which are screen prints of from kind of that big to, to quite big scale. It's a huge, huge archive and it's not, it's not used as, as much as it can be. It is used, I mean, there's lots of people in and out there, but anybody can go and use it at any time. I know there's the Queer Music Archive in Manchester, which we went in some while ago to do some research and there was somebody from the Queer Music Archive and there was somebody else from Goldsmiths who runs their MA in Queer History was doing some research there. There's a fantastic theatre collection of posters and flyers and uh, photographic material. There's a lot of stuff there. One of the great important things about libraries, anybody can go there. Libraries are one of the most incredible resources that we have anywhere, full stop. I mean, look at this. You could spend years in here, but they're free and they're there for anybody and they're also populated by people who really, really know what they're doing and who are really passionate about it and really want to, want to engage people in having discussions and having conversations. And if you go and approach somebody, go, what I'm looking for is this, and I don't really know what it's called, I don't know who it's by, and, and somebody go, oh, that's exciting. They're really, really important, really significant. I think aside from just as, as repositories of knowledge and information, but uh, and as spaces to go and be in. Also, the people who are there can approach the subject from a slightly different angle or a slightly different viewpoint and go, that's great, but have you thought about that? Oh, but there's this other really interesting book or video or sound recording or whatever that talks about that. Why don't you come and have a look at that? Or we've got this group of people over here who are really interested in doing that. So, you know, there's all of that stuff going on. It's very much exists as a space to make work in as well. So whether it's doing an exhibition or doing performance-based events or workshops or any of those kind of ideas, I think they're really open spaces to, to help artists to generate new work. I suppose in terms of the work that I've done with libraries um, as an artist, Libraries are very much a catalyst for creativity. Mm -hmm.